Thank you for coming. My name's Ewan. I'm a student here, PhD student at the Centre for Quantum Photonics and in the Quantum Engineering Doctor Doctoral Training Centre. Um, and I'm going to walk you through today uh, the research that we have going on in this centre uh, and in particular the integrated photonics that we're trying to do. So we're trying to do photonics and in particular quantum photonics experiments. Um, and traditionally that was done using this bulk optic stuff. So we have things like mirrors, we have lasers, uh, and this thing's quite large and it gets quite unwieldy. And to build a quantum computer, which is our ultimate aim, um, we actually need hundreds of thousands of these components, and that ends up being absolutely unwieldy. Um, so this was a great building block, and from the 80s to kind of the mid 90s, uh, from the mid 2000s, that's what we worked with. Uh, but that really became unscalable. We couldn't really, we kind of reached a limit with this kind of technology. Um, and if you want to make parallels with classical computing, it was very similar to the kind of valve classical computers that you got in the early kind of mid 40s. Um, so that thing worked and showed the principle, but wasn't scalable. So the next thing, progression we made uh, was moving on to fiber tech. So we've got um, a fiber gate here. It's something called a nil gate. Uh, and this was using the same technology that you use in fiber optics, um, fiber optic communications. But uh, you can see how the scale has gone from this bulk optics thing to something that looks a bit more scalable. It's kind of uh, at least looking smaller, more compact, um, and maybe is not so uh, temperamental to environmental stuff. And this was starting to look like, so we have the first integrated circuit. So this starts to look like some kind of integration, some kind of mass production thing that you could do. Uh, and here's the first germanium integrated circuit in, from the 50s, from the late 50s. Um, and we, we thought that was great, and it worked pretty well, um, but we thought we'd take it one step further. So now we're moving on to really where CQP, uh, the Center for Quantum Photonics, is famous for. Um, so this here is a, is a silica photonic chip, glass chip, uh, and it's basically taking all of this technology and shrinking it to something the size of, you can see here, um, and it works in the same principle. So this, the, the fiber here is just guiding the light around in different paths and, and bring them together to interfere them. This is doing the same thing, but with waveguides on the chip. So if you look at the blow up of the chip, I actually have a laser under the table that's plugging in light. If I can get the lights off, there we go. So the light is coming in from the left-hand side of the chip and traveling to the right. And it's being guided, as you can see, in the paths, which we call waveguides. Now to change where the light goes in this chip, we have to apply to apply heaters to different parts of the chip, and that changes a property called phase, um, and that can change where the, where the light goes. So we have this chip hooked up to my iPad, very tech savvy, uh, and so what I have here is just, this is the, all the heaters that we have on that chip, and I can apply heat, I can apply a current or voltage to those heaters and actually change the property of the waveguide, and that changes where it goes. So I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna toggle this one on and off, and there we go. So what you can see, is I'm toggling on a heater right on the far left, uh, on and off, and that's actually changing where the light is being guided. Um, the reason you can't see it here is actually the light that we have to use in this chip is infrared, so you can't see it with your eyes, so this is an infrared camera. So you can immediately see that we've gone right from large scale down to this very small scale, so this chip's maybe uh, five centimeters across, um, and that's starting to look really like something you can make large and have lots of light running through it and lots of components in it. But we decided to go one stage further, um, and actually we, we, had, uh, we took the silica devices, the glass devices, and built them onto silicon. So this is built using the same technology uh, as your computer chips uh, now, and actually we can get much uh, tighter component uh, density, uh, which means we can fit much more on the chip. So this tiny chip here, I'm now gonna show you with my microscope what's on here. And this is really where we're heading now. So there we go. So this, is, this chip is only about, uh, I think, three or four years old. So this is really kind of the scale that we're working at now. Uh, this experiment here, this chip, is one experiment. This now has 24 experiments on it. Um, and what you can see is you can see uh, this kind of spiral orangey ring going along here. That's actually the waveguide. So that's a big ring. That's how we generate the single photons. Uh, and the kind of the thick parts you can see is all the electronics. So that's how we are applying heat. It works in the same way to the other chips. We're applying heat to different parts of the chip and that's changing the properties. Um, and yeah, so we're now at this point where we have scaled from huge bulk optics right down to having hundreds and thousands of components and using a fabrication technique that we know works. We know classical computing can function well and we know we know how to manufacture hundreds of thousands of components. 
So this is where we're at now. This is uh, CQP state of the art. This chip's only maybe a few years old. Uh, and when you go on the tours of the lab upstairs, you'll be able to see uh, newer versions of these in action doing experiments. Um, and the reason why we think this uh, technology is exciting is because we're really coming at quantum computing from a different angle. So this is a technology that we know is scalable. We know in principle can do quantum computing. And we're really just now trying to make this technology quantum. So we're going with a scalable technology and making it quantum. Uh, as opposed to what a lot of other research groups are doing, which is taking a quantum technology and now trying to make it scalable, and that comes with its own challenges. So this is what we hope uh, will lead to, lead to a, the first maybe stage of quantum computing. Um, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs>